Hey everyone, Wayne here. This is going to be a very partial playthrough of a turn for Battle for Germany. I just want to show the game in action, kind of show you guys a little bit, um, a little bit of the back and forth. I'm not going to probably even play through a full turn per se, just because once you start playing, you're gonna you'll see how it works and uh, you get to know whether it's you know the type of game that you're interested in or not. So, uh, which if you haven't seen it yet, I have an unboxing, I also have an overview and review video up. Um, if you want to watch those, I definitely recommend you check out my overview and review where I go more in depth on my thoughts on the game. But I'll tell you, uh, spoiler alert, I really like the game. So, all right, let's go ahead and dive in here. Uh, you should see what we're doing is starting off on the Eastern front over here. Um, it's the Soviet players turn to start. So they will play, they will do the Soviet, all the Soviet units. Um, in this game, you are not doing, um, you're going to do the Soviet they're going to do the Soviets, and then the, as the Soviet player, you do the actual Soviet units, communists, you do the West Germans, and then the other player takes over, they do Western Allies, and then the East Germans. So we're not going to play through with the East Germans, um, we're just going to play through the Soviets, and then I'll do the West Germans, so you can see how that works on Eastern Front and on the Western Front. So, um, and then, yeah, okay. All right, let's go ahead and uh, jump into that. Excuse me. Um... So you start off, um, the, f the sequence play, the first sequence for the Soviets would be the replacement phase. However, you skip that on the first turn. Every turn, you're going to get replacement points, which are units that you can then place out. How many units you get to place out uh, on the map from the eastern side when you're the uh, playing as the Soviets and you have your Soviet units. So skip that on the first turn because we don't have any losses yet. Well, okay, theoretically there were losses, but none for this game purposes. Um, you then go on to the Soviet movement phase. Pretty standard movement. You're looking at your movement points, comparing it to the terrain. Right now, it's mostly set up pretty well. We're, we're very close to really uh, being ready to fight already. Um, you're seeing, you know, we're in contact with the enemy in many, many, many spots. There's very few places you're not already in contact with the enemy. So, um, what I will do here, though, just kind of... There are a couple, though, we can kind of maneuver. So, let's go ahead and do that. We like to do is generally start kind of from the left side and work my way to the right. So we go ahead and we can look and we can see um, we have the Courland Peninsula up here. We have some German units up here. They, they're kind of trapped. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start bringing some units up to help them. So I'm going to do is I'm going to break contact with this uh, Soviet infantry, the six guards. One, it's clear to rain, so one movement. We have four movement points. One, two, three. Four. Yeah, let's go ahead and put him here. Um, same way, I want to go ahead and break contact with him. This guard unit, the first Balkans. One, or Baltic, excuse me. One, not, not Balkans, Baltic. One, two, three. We'll go ahead and engage there. So um, once you move into a zone of control, you have to stop movement. And then what I like to do is I like to rotate him just to show that I moved that unit. So just give him a little rotate. All right, again, we're good, looking good, I think, in contact, all these places. I don't see a lot of places I need to want to disengage or anything like that. I'm just feeling pretty good. Let's see, kind of work our way across. Um, okay, here's a unit here. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move him up. So let's go ahead, this first guard infantry. Uh, he has four. This would be two movement points. Go ahead and move him, and he stops there. Let's go ahead and rotate him a little bit, show he's moved. Um, we have our, what is this? The Bulgarian infantry here. Yeah, let's go ahead and move. We're going to need him. So let's go ahead and move him up into here. That's two. He's up two. So then go ahead and he stops here. Um, this infantry here, the fourth guard. He's not engaged with anyone. Oh, where should he attack at? Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's move him right here. Yep. Lock in there. And then we have our Romanian unit here. Let's go ahead and move him across the river. That's one, two, and he'll be locked in. I think that's it for movement. Yeah, that's it for the Soviet movement phase. I'm gonna go ahead and unrotate them just so it doesn't look crazy as I get into combat. All right, perfect, they all look good now. All right, we're set up nicely, don't worry. And what you're gonna see in this game is you're gonna see it's gonna be very kind of slow at first as you're just sort of you know, two big armies still fighting back and forth. But as the units start falling off the map, you're not going to be able to replace all of them. And trust me, you're going to start seeing a lot more maneuvering, a lot more movement. So to start off, it's very slow from the movement. 
but once you get a couple turns in, just a couple turns in, you're gonna see a lot more movement. So I don't like to completely judge it by seeing it. Well, I only moved a couple units. What the heck, Wayne? Don't worry, the game has a lot more movement kind of as you play, it just opens up more as you play. So um, definitely suggest you check, you know, try it out yourself and, and see how that works. So we did our movement phase. Let's do the Soviet combat phase now. Um, just like I had mentioned, I like to do um, start from what I did with movement, start from say the, the north side of the map here and work our way south. This makes it a little easier uh, for me. So, and you can, and you can pick whatever you want, do whatever you want. Um, I'm looking at seeing I have this Soviet front and the Soviet infantry. We want to attack that German infantry right there. So, we're going to go ahead and attack. Uh, I'm going to rotate them just to show that they're attacking. Uh, they are, what is it, an 8 and a 7. So, it's a total of 15 attack strength. Versus the five, he's in clear terrain, so no bonuses. So it's going to be three to one odds. Go ahead and roll on our two or three. Three to one, we got a three. That is an exchange. Ah, it hurts us actually. So in exchange, we do eliminate him. So the East German unit is destroyed, um, removed from from the spot, placed in the East German um, uh, box. Let me see if I can see it on the map. No, nope. let's see. Oh yeah, it's right down, right down here. So if you look at the bottom left of the video here, whoop. And I already have some West German units destroyed because that's from uh, the West German part. I actually filmed that part first. I know, uh, video magic, but you're going to see it after this. Crazy, huh? All right, so um, we went and did that. And now because we, it's an exchange, we have to eliminate, he has uh, five defensive strength. We have to eliminate five attack power out of ours. Now, I do not want to get rid of the front. So I'm going to go ahead to Soviet infantry. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate him place him in my Soviet destroyed units box. So, because I want to keep those fronts, they are very powerful and I want to keep them on the map as long as possible. So, all right, we can go ahead and start working our way. And again, he was involved with that combat, so we'll keep him turned here just so I know. Start working our way down the map a little bit, see where we want to fight. There's definitely some spots we want to engage in some combat here, I'm, I'm seeing. Um, ooh, that's a good one. All right, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and attack him. I know he's got good defenses there, but let's, you know, let's do it. He's on... You can see he's on broken terrain. These Germans here, so they can get double the defense, but I'm not worried about that. I just want to kick some butt. So they're at 11, so they're going to have 22 defense. Uh-oh, that would have been a bad idea. And we are attacking with, let's go with that, 16 uh, plus 7, so 23, 7, 30. So was that, 30 to 22? So basically 1 to 1. We're not at 2 to 1. We're only at 1 to 1. You notice there's a river here. However, we have one Soviet unit on the other side of the river attacking um, not across the river. So it nullifies the rest of it, negates the rest of the river crossing for attack. So I really like that rule. So, all right, so basically it's going to be one-to-one. -one, so let's see what happens. One-to-one -one. on a one-to-one -one on the CRT, roll to five. That is Defender Retreat. Very nice. And actually, this is, the, this is an awesome result for us. So um, we're forcing him to retreat. He can't overstack, so there's two units here. You see, there's two German units here, so he can't put any units there. So we just have to either retreat to here or here. Well, those zones of control extend into those hexes, whether there's other units or not, which there's not, but it doesn't matter. So these German units, both of them are eliminated. So that was a great result. That is one of the examples I talked about in my overview and review of how how you force retreats, where you force retreats, can have a tremendous impact on um, causing losses. So awesome there. And because we did that, we can go ahead and move some units up. Let's let's move this front up. Yeah, let's move this. We'll cross the river with that front right there. Boom. You can only advance one, but that's okay. Very nice. Now we'll go ahead and rotate them quick just to show that they weren't involved in that combat because we don't want any more combats occurring over here. I'll be cheating on that. So, All right, very nice. All right, now let's go ahead. Let's attack. Doing good all here. Let's attack these Germans right here. Um, they're talk across a river. So at seven across river doubles it, so fourteen. Uh oh. Um, our, we're in attack with these Russians and then our Polish, our communist Polish, right here. So that's six, six, eighteen, plus eight, twenty-six. So what do they say? Fourteen, twenty-six versus fourteen. Oh, not quite double. So we still it's just one to one. You just round down. So one to one. Roll the two on a one to one. Defender retreat. All right, in this, in this time, this case, he can go ahead and he can retreat, and you retreat one unit at a time, and how it works is one unit, and then they have to retreat into an open hex if available, um, unless it would eliminate them, then they can retreat onto a stack. So here it wouldn't work because it's under control. 
Here he already has somebody. Here's zone of control. But here we can move into an open hex. We're gonna go ahead and have to do that. Um, we have to advance one. Let's go ahead and advance our front. Boom. Very nice. And I know uh, manipulating counters with uh, the tweezers on video is not very exciting. Um, but it's just part of it when you're filming it. That's one of the downsides of hex and counter games. I love to play them. But when you're filming them, it could be, it look, I think it looks a little more tedious than it is, right? We've all been there where you're watching a video, like, okay, step on it. But it's like, you can even manipulate so fast. But trust me, when you're actually playing it, you don't really notice. You can either use the tweezers or a lot of these, because there's not a ton of stacks, you can use your hands too. So I just, I've gotten used to using the tweezers at least somewhat. So let's try without the tweezers for a little bit here. All right, so we did all these combats here, working our way down. Um, oh, for sure, we're going to attack him right there, for sure. So this German unit here, he's done for. So we're gonna let's attack with this stack of uh, Russians here. First guard in the was it the eighth guard, eighth guard. Let's go ahead and attack. Ooh, eighth uh, first guard um, armored units too. So they have a total of thirteen attack power, thirteen attack strength against his three defense. No modifiers for terrain. So three goes into thirteen. What four times the leftover? Drop the remainder. So four to one odds. Four to one. You roll a three. Exchange. Oh, that hurt us. So I did not want the exchange result. Did not want that result. So. Exchange, so we're gonna go ahead. Let's eliminate this armored unit. Yeah, might as well. So we did survive, so we can go ahead and uh advance into that hex and we'll rotate to show. All right, bummer there, but it's okay, it's not the end of the world. So let's attack that stack here. So these Russians with both of these stacks are Russians. So we're at let's see 14 plus 12, so 28. So we're at 28. He is 3-3, three, three, total of 6, plus we're attacking across a river, so he doubles it to 12. Um, 12 versus our, what did I say? What are we at? Uh, 26 versus 12. Ooh, 2-1, to one, though. Yeah, there we go. So 12 goes on 26. Yep, two times. So 2-1, to one, roll to 4. Uh, defender retreat. Not bad, not bad. So he's going to go ahead and, so this is an example. So he'll re first unit will retreat right back here. Second unit, he can't retreat, any of these hexes will be eliminated, so he's able to go and stack and retreat to stack. Otherwise, he'd have to retreat to an empty hex, like I mentioned. Let's go ahead and advance. Uh, let's just advance an infantry here. Boom. Rotate him a little bit. Again, it's a little tedious on video, I understand that, but when you're playing, you don't really notice. You just go ahead and do it as part of the thing, and it's just becomes routine, right? It becomes part of the part of the play, so... um. Um, okay, so I'm looking. No, no, none of those. I don't want. To, I want to see if they basically stay defend. I don't have a strong attack there, so I'm not. I'm not looking at attacking there. Um, here maybe. Yeah, let's do that. Well, oh. all right. Let's go ahead. Try to get a foothold here. So let's attack. We have our units here in the front. We have seven, six, eight. We're gonna attack this uh, mountain. Mount infantry here outside Budapest or in Budapest, I should say. Yeah, they're in Budapest. We're attacking Budapest here. Uh, seven, six, so it's a total of 13, plus the eight, 21, six. Oh, this was a bad idea, actually. So six, he's doubled because he's on broke, uh, broken train. So, and then triple because we're attacking across a river. So times three becomes 18. Yeah, so the six becomes 18. Where were we at? 13, it's eight. Okay, so one to one. So it's not that bad. All right, so one to one. I thought it'd be better odds than that. One to one, roll to four. That is a defender retreat. So we are able to force him to retreat at least. Let's go ahead and advance our front into Budapest. Very nice. Which Budapest, yeah, there we go. Boom. Not bad. I was a little worried there for a second, but I thought I miscalculated the odds. That's all right, though. We force him to retreat. You're going to see a lot of that at first, you know, forcing units to retreat kind of out of your way. Uh, especially when you're, you know, a big tough one. So, um, did I move that earlier? I thought I did. Uh, maybe I didn't. That's ah, all right. You know what? It's all right. It is what it is. I'm not going to check. Gonna do the instant replay. Check the film. All right. So, let's go ahead and do some more attacks. I think we're good over here. I don't think I want to force my uh, Yugoslavian um, communists to attack because there's a lot of, you can see the Germans are on good defensive terrain. So, it would hurt me to try to attack him there. So I'm not going to go ahead and do that yet. Um, I'm going to try to attack this German. I think it would be the last attack. Well, no, not the last attack. It would be 
attack we're going to do here. Um, yeah, it may actually be the last attack. Yep. What we're going to do is let's go ahead and attack uh, this, excuse me, yep, this German infantry with our Romanian and guards here. So seven, eight, nine, ten versus three is in clear terrain. So that's three to one odds. Roll to one. Defender eliminated. Boom. Very nice. Um, I'm actually not going to advance after combat. So, oops, I definitely want to leave them turned. Because I don't want to move away from my guard unit here. And I don't want to move away from these guys here. I want to, I want to see near them. So, um, let's see here. I think that's it. Yeah, because I'm going to sit tight down here. So that is it for the uh, Soviet combat phase. So... Like I said before, I already filmed it technically, but we're gonna—I'm gonna show you now. We're gonna jump into the um, Western German front, and because that's what I'll continue to play. So I played my Soviets here, and now I will then do the Germans on the Western front, and then the other player would go. I don't think I'm gonna film that part, um, just because you guys—it's like I said—it's pretty simple game. I want you guys to see how not complex it is. But at the same time, you get a lot of strategy choices. Because look at it now. So readjust, you know. And I, at the end of it, I always put them back. Um, You've already advanced in some hexes, right? So there's still a lot of units left, a lot of German units left, a lot of our units left, of course. But we've suffered two losses, and we've destroyed, what, five East German units already? And just to give you a heads up, next turn, they get one back. East Germans, or the Germans on the Eastern Front, get one unit back, which has to be the weakest. So that two, three, four, they get that one back, which will pop up outside Germany. And then the rest of these, though, they're staying in that destroyed box. So you already see how, you know, after literally just a couple turns, you're going to be knocking out all kinds of units. You're opening up gaps. You're opening up spaces. You can start encircling. You can create pockets. You can eliminate units when you force that retreat into a zone of control, et cetera, et cetera. So you really get to see kind of how this works. Um, so let's go ahead. We'll jump into the Western Front, and then that'll be the video. All right. So you guys just saw the Soviet phases of the Soviet player turn. Now you're going to see the West German uh, phases of the Soviet player turn. So I have moved the camera over to the Western front here. Um, I have to have my dice tower right in the middle here. Normally I have it off to the side. It's quite so disruptive, but I just want you guys to be able to see the dice rolls. Um, so for the Western Germans, Western side, you're going to see you know, the Western front here, the German, the uh, lighter gray units here in France, Netherlands, and then here in Italy, Northern Italy. So... Um, just like with the Soviets during the first turn, you don't do a replacement phase. You skip it. Otherwise it'll, the turn chart will tell you, you know, how many replacement units you get. You have to draw from the weakest, um, as the Germans and Soviets do. It's only the Western allies that get to draw, get to pick whichever units they want to. So obviously you will probably pick the strongest. So, all right. So you skip the replacement phase. Uh, so West German movement phase in this particular battle, um, this particular case, there's, there's very few units you would maybe want to move um, um, to start off the game anyway because everyone's pretty close together. The lines have drawn. I mean, the battle clearly has been raging now for several months here on the Western Front. So even looking at it, you know, we have all of our German units. So that's what we're playing right now, Western West uh, Germans on the Western Front. Um, we have this German infantry, the 65th Infantry. They're kind of on their own. These are all double stacked so that you can't move into any of those hexes. But... We can maybe back up over there. Let's see. We have movement five, so would that be one, two, three, four? I wouldn't be able to make it in time, though. Um, we can at least get prepared to go back him up, though, just in case. So let's go ahead. We're going to move. We're going to move this unit. be the only unit we move. The German 65th Infantry. Move into this. It's broken train. So one, two, three, four. And then he only has one movement point left, so he can't cross the river to go over there. So... Um, as I did on the other side, I rotate. I would rotate them for movement, but that's the only unit I'm going to move, so I'm not going to worry about it. Now we'll go on to the uh, West German combat phase. So as part of this game in turn one, and this is a rule that you can ignore if you want. The rule book says, you know, hey, you can either do it, but then there's a caveat, which is historically, right, December 44, Battle of the Bulge, according to the rules, Hitler's declaring, hey, you have to launch an attack on the Western Front. You have to launch two attacks. So even though we're in great defensive position, even though the Allies are pretty strong, there's Hitler saying, yep, you have to attack. So um, what I like to do is kind of almost, I don't want to say fake it, but just kind of do it in such a way that 
you know, I'm not going to lose the max. And maybe I actually have a chance to, to succeed. So let's go ahead and do that and conduct those attacks. So otherwise, I don't know if I would necessarily conduct any attacks, period. But hey, he says we got to do it. We got to do two of them. So let's go ahead and do two of them. First one, I see this 15th U.S. Infantry here kind of in the middle of nowhere a little bit. Let's go ahead and attack him with all those adjacent Germans. So let's add up our attacker strength. What do we have? 2, 2, 6, 4. So that's 14. 15, 16, uh, total of 20. So we have six units, hopefully more, more than 20, but as of right now, we're only going to have 20. Um, we're going to be facing this U.S. unit, which is on broken terrain, so it doubles. Um, we are attacking across the river here, but we have German units not attacking across the river, so they're not going to have to worry. Um, so we don't have to worry about the river. It's just going to be double because of the broken, um, excuse me, the, uh, yep, the broken terrain. So his 8 becomes a 16, so it's, was it, 20 to 16? So still only 1 to 1, so not great, great odds, but it is what it is. So let's go ahead and roll on a 1 to 1. All right, we got a 1 on 1 to 1, which means an exchange. So we go ahead and eliminate the U.S. unit. And then we look at his defense as 8. So we'll place Western Allied destroyed units here in this box right here. Um, he has 8, so we have to get rid of 8 attacking strength which does hurt us because we only have a few we don't have a ton of units so let's go ahead and eliminate this two well yeah let's eliminate this two here this must be German destroyed and then uh, I don't want to do it but uh, actually let's do this other two and then this four back here that's a total of eight so we did suffer a lot of losses, but again, that's I would not have made that attack other than the fact that he wanted us to, so that's what we're going to do. So because we did eliminate, um, we can go ahead and move up a unit. So I'm going to go ahead and move up this 676 six up into that spot um, just to sort of secure. So we are advancing a little bit here at least. We get to take that hex. Um, get to launch one more attack into the rules. What I'm going to do is I'm going to launch, let's see, I don't want to do that. That'll leave the flank open. Um, oh shoot, this one's going to be tough. Let's go ahead. Let's attack this uh, German unit. And then go ahead and... Oh, and oh, and another thing you can do is to uh, signify that, hey, you know, just made an attack. A lot of times I'll do that during the game. Um, you know, rotate my counters a little bit to show that, yep, these are the ones that participated in an attack. So that way I don't forget and then try to duck an attack later. So, all right. Um, I'm trying to think of good. There's not really great attack available. It's all kind of rough on me. So let's go ahead. Let's actually attack this stack of American units with these. Well, let's just attack with this one right here. So uh, who knows what will happen. Let's go ahead and just attack. He's going to go ahead and attack um, right over here. So he has a three attack versus, let's see, eight, six is 14 defense doubled. So 28. Yeah. So it's going to be th uh, three divided into, what did I say? 28. It's 14 times 2, 20, yeah, 28. So let's see, 9, uh, 9 to 1, or 1 to 9, I should say. Can't do that. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do the 1 to 4 on the CRT, um, which is a 2, which is an attacker retreat. So actually, not that bad. Luckily, if we had rolled uh, 4, 5, or 6, we've been eliminated. So we just had to retreat. So basically, we just have to retreat back here. No big deal. Um, however, as part of combat, even though in a lot of games, the defender can't retreat in this one. Defender gets to retreat. Or excuse me, the, sorry, the defender gets to advance a unit if they want to out of the hex that was attacked. Let's go ahead and move um, 13th US up here to secure. So now we've actually taken that part of the west wall, which as a fortified hex, we now destroy that. So you can mark it with a cube. You can mark it with another counter. You just try to remember it, whatever you want to do. Um, I have a cube. I'm not going to throw it out there now, but I have cubes that I can use for that. So, um, that I would place there to show that, yep, this part of the wall is destroyed. So, all right, well, those are the two attacks that we have to make. I um, really don't want to make any more attacks because they're not very advantageous for us as the Western Germans. In fact, they both kind of hurt us a little bit. Um, we eliminated one Western Ally unit, one U.S. unit, but we also lost three of ours. So, I don't know, and we lost a position on the wall here. So, I don't think I'd call it a, a victory at all, maybe more of a wash. So, all right, that is the... Um, West Germans turn.